what you say in general about such questions, uh, you know, what they taught me in C-suite school is that you never respond to a hypothetical. But what, what, what you, you say in general about these questions is that, you know, you always achieve less than you imagine in two years and much more than you imagine in ten, right? The progress in the near to medium term never seems like it is as great as it should be. But you look back after ten years and say, wow, look at what has happened. Um, it, Ed Krebs um, said to me at one point that because of methodologic constraints, that it, at the time when he was an assistant professor, it was a perfectly reasonable PhD thesis for a student to have addressed the question, what is the amino acid composition of a protein? And to have answered that question over the course of their thesis. And they would answer it by taking the protein and hydrolyzing it and then feeding the hydrolysate to yeast mutants that were dependent upon exogenous amino acids and then weigh the yeast. So you could say, well, if it required alanine, you know, here's how much of alanine it must have had because here's how much yeast it had. And the error bars were enormous, and et cetera. But they determined sort of the amino acid composition of the protein. That same experiment, which can be done by a machine in a few hours now, right? It takes no time. Uh, similarly, when I look back on my experience, and Ed was a little bit older than I am now when he told me the story, but when I look back on my experience, the problem of understanding antibody diversity, which perplexed everybody for half a century or more, I mean, you can figure that one out now in a couple of weeks, less for a few thousand dollars, because the sequencing machine can quickly show you the difference between germline DNA and DNA in a B lymphocyte population. True, there's some other background that had to come, but frankly, we had that background for a long time. So technology drives science to a very significant extent. And technology, the, the pace of technology advancement is only increasing. Uh, the uh, DNA sequencing is, of course, famously has, has the, the pace of improvement has exceeded Moore's law with respect to semiconductors, but that's true also with respect to all aspects of measurement, and purification. In general, you know, when you can measure things, you can make progress. You don't get what you expect, you get what you inspect. And if you can look at it and measure it and understand exactly what you're seeing, it's possible to pose questions that have real salience. And those questions drive you to further discoveries. So when I look at the future for the next 10 years, I would say that technology is going to produce advances in our understanding of immune regulation that are unimaginable now because it's so powerful.